Hello and welcome to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at titration curves and pH indicators. By the end of this lesson then we should be able to do the following. We should be able to recall how to complete a titration, recall the meaning of equivalence and endpoints, identify suitable indicators to use for a titration and identify and draw different types of pH curves. So completing a titration is actually one of your required practical skills and you'll be needing to recall how you complete a titration in your exam. They could ask you how to prepare standard solutions and also how to do titrations. If you want to check how to do this I have produced a video lecture in a previous lesson just go to the end of this video and you'll find the link there. Quickly, just to go over, you pipette a known solution into a conical flask and you add some appropriate indicator, which we will then talk about in a minute. Then secondly, you titrate against the solution that you put into the conical flask. Let's say you put an acid into the conical flask you then slowly add dropwise a base to that conical flask with the indicator in until there is a permanent color change from that indicator. The permanent color change should indicate the end point of the titration and should occur at what we call the equivalence point. We'll talk about both of those terms in just a moment. So we're going to have a quick look before we look at pH curves at indicators, equivalents and endpoints. Now, again, this is a required practical, particularly for the A level. And it's actually required practical number nine. And that is to use a pH meter to measure a titration. And from that, you will check the pH of a titration at given volumes of either acid or alkali and be able to construct a pH curve. Here on the left hand side we've got an example of the sort of data you might assume to get from a pH curve and in this reaction we've added a weak acid in the conical flask so we've pipetted that in and from the burette we are adding to that a strong alkali we're going to look at pH curves in just a moment some important terms then we have the equivalence point This is the point at which we've added the same amount of acid to an equivalent amount of alkali. So we, the amount of acid is equal to the amount of alkali added. The equivalence point then here can be seen on our pH curve and it's the sharp change in pH, so it's almost a vertical line. And what we therefore want to observe an end point for the titration is for the indicator to change colour over this region. In other words, the pH here changes between about pH 8 to pH 11 and therefore a suitable indicator here would be phenyl phthalene because it's pH colour change. We have colourless at low pH or in acid conditions and we have a pink colour in high pH or alkali conditions and that's going to occur above 10. 
and so our endpoint will occur here between 8.3 to 10 and that is true for our pH curve that we see here. What you will need to know is you'll need to know the pH changes and color changes for these two indicators so that's methyl orange and in acidic conditions it's red while in alkaline conditions it's yellow and it will be red below 3.1 and above 4.4 so it's actually yellow in uh, acid conditions as well but above 4.4 it's yellow and its color change we observe is orange between those two regions phenolphthalein is a lot more stark so we have a colorless below 8.3 pH and above 10 pH it's pink and it changes color so we get the faintest of pink changes between 8.3 and 10. We're now going to look at some pH curves for different reactions and this first example here we got a very low pH around about 1 so here we're looking at a strong acid and that is reacting and we're getting an equivalence point here which is a sharp end point and we're going to a very high pH up here so this is about a pH around 13 so this is a strong acid and we have added to that a strong alkali In this reaction then, since we've got a strong acid and a strong alkali, the equivalence point occurs across a pH range here of quite low to quite high value. And because of this, we could probably use either of these indicators. What we tend to use for this is phenolphthalein, and that's because the colorless to pink change is more obvious and easier to distinguish sometimes in the red to yellow and then when we look at the red to yellow we're looking at for a color change of orange so for this example probably best to use phenolphthalein where we would observe it colorless to start with and it would change to a pink color on the addition of the alkali in this next reaction then we have a pH where we're starting at a very low pH so here we've got a strong acid then what occurs is we add a base or an alkali here the 25 cm cube we're seeing a sharp equivalence point and the pH is tailing off at a lower pH than before it's only making it to maybe at best 10 at the end maybe 9 and so here we've got a strong base reacting with a weak alkali. So perhaps hydrochloric acid along with something like ammonia. In this example then, our equivalence point is occurring between the pH range of about, well maybe pH 3 up to pH 8 even perhaps slightly less than pH 3, perhaps pH 2. What that means certainly is that our color change for phenolphthalein is not going to be any use for this reaction. And therefore a suitable indicator here will be methyl orange, where we'll observe it as red in the strong acid and yellow in the weak alkali. That means our endpoint we will observe an orange color in this example then we got a pH curve and we can see that pH is probably around about four or five and so this is for a weak acid on the left hand side and just note that this is a true effect and the initial pH does rise quite sharply before tailing off which is different to the strong acid which has a fairly constant pH throughout at the beginning. So just be aware that this initial 
addition of alkali to a weak acid does result in a slight curve at the beginning of the pH curve. We then have our equivalents and we're going up to a high pH, maybe 11 or 12, and so this is a strong alkali to which we've been adding. In this case then, with our weak acid and our strong alkali, our equivalence point is occurring here, probably between two pHs here, between about pH 6 and about pH 12. And then what that means is we need a indicator which is going to give a pH change above pH 7. So methyl orange in this case is a not a suitable indicator. And instead we're better off with phenylphthalein, where we'll be colourless in the weak acid. And then we'll have a strong pink colour in the strong alkali and we'll have a weak pink, pink tinge as we get to the end point or at equivalence. In our final example then we've got something with a lowish pH maybe four or five so this is a weak acid and we're ending up at a reasonably low alkali pH and so here we've got a weak alkali and notice that our equivalence point does not produce a sharp endpoint in other words there's no sharp change in pH at equivalence so in this case Neither methyl orange or phenylphthalein would be any use because there's no sharp change in that pH. And so for a weak acid and a weak base, the only real way of measuring how the pH changes or when we get an equivalence point is to use something like a pH meter. We can't do this simply with an indicator. So our quick summary here then, we've got four types of pH curves we need to be able to identify. Number one here is our strong acid and strong base. Number two here is our strong acid with a weak base or weak alkali. Number three here is our weak acid with our strong base. And number four is our weak acid and our weak base. Putting them all together on one plot, we get something that looks like this over on the right hand side and we've also got two different types of indicators that we have to be able to recall and we need to know at which pH change they change color and also the colors from which they change. You could be asked to look at any number of indicators and be able to identify a suitable indicator based on their pH change and colors but you wouldn't have to recall anything more and the methyl orange and the phenyl phalin in your exam. The final thing to note is that these pH curves can work in the opposite way. So you could have a strong alkali reacting with a strong acid or a strong alkali with a weak acid, a weak alkali with a strong acid and also a weak alkali with a weak acid. And we'll just have a look at those in drawing some sketch curves at the end now. Okay, so the last thing we're going to look at is sketching some pH curves. Just a couple of examples uh, before the end of this session. Here we're being asked to sketch the pH curve for nitric acid, which is a strong monoprotic acid. Here we've got a strong monobasic substance, which is sodium hydroxide. So the first thing to do, a suitable indicator where we could choose either of them, I'm going to choose phenyl phthalein because that gives us the best uh, indication of the endpoint and we something to note here is we've now got the 25 cm cubed of 0.1 mole nitric acid that's in our flask so we're going to be starting at a low pH and we're adding 50 times 0.2 mole of sodium hydroxide so the concentration here of the sodium hydroxide is double that of the nitric acid. And therefore our equivalence point 
will occur at 12.5 centimeters cubed. In other words, we're going to see that sharp rise at about 12.5. Because we've got a strong acid and a strong base, we're going to be rising here and going to reach about 11. Slightly wiggly line, but there is my sketch of a pH curve for my strong acid with a strong base where the concentration of the base is double that of the acid. This time in the final example then, we're going to look at a strong base, sodium hydroxide, in the flask. And we've got a strong acid in the burette to which we're going to add this to. So again, I could use either indicator. We're going to go preferentially here for phenolphthalein. And notice that we're a strong base, so we're going to have a pH at the top here this time. We've got 20 cm cubed of 0.1 and an equal concentration of hydrochloric acid. And so we're going to have an equivalence point that occurs at equal volumes because we are one to one ratio. So here we're going to have equivalence at 20 centimeters cubed. And because we're a strong acid, we're going to drop to a low concentration. So here, a little bit exaggerated perhaps. The important thing here is that I'm before 25 at approximately 20 centimeters cubed. Might be a bit late there. And then we're getting to a low pH and we've got a sharp change in pH at equivalence and therefore our end point with our indicator will be observed. The thing that we would observe here is we would be pink and we would turn colourless at our end point. Okay, that's all for this week's lessons on titrations, indicators and pH curves. You can subscribe to my videos here. There's also a link to the other relevant videos of practical titrations and also to the other acid base playlist. Now you should be able to recall how to complete a titration, recall the meaning of equivalence and endpoints, identify suitable indicators to use for a titration, and identify and draw different types of pH curves. Thanks for watching.